Today, it's my great pleasure to introduce Lisa Martin, who is going to talk about mastering the art of letting go. And I think this is a very timely presentation because one of the things this pandemic has caused is for us to stay home much longer than we normally do. So it's good. To, and I'm beginning to find out that I have stuff that I really am not using at all and a couple of things that I thought maybe I should get. So I'm ha very happy, Lisa, to welcome you here today. And I would also like to ask people to make sure they have a pen and paper because Lisa's going to make this uh, something that we can um, learn by and remember. So welcome, Lisa, and thank you for doing this. You're, you're welcome, you're welcome. And, um, you know, I like this to be interactive, so I'm gonna give you some, a little overview, and then we're gonna go at it because I wanna learn from you why you tuned in today and what's on your mind about your relationship to your stuff and your home. Um, because it's a very, very personal relationship. Everything we choose to bring into our home, our space, or choose to let go of is a decision for us. And right now, some of those decisions feel kind of, can feel kind of complicated. Um, there's a little chaos in the world right now, a little emotional chaos. So we're gonna just set that aside for now. And hopefully I'll be able to give at least um, all of you some helpful tip on maybe dealing with something that's going on in your life now, because we all have these questions. And so my business is called Downsize for Inner Peace. And what we aim to do is improve people's quality of life and reduce their stress. Those are both good things, right? Right. So um, why does stuff cause us happiness and or stress, right? Stuff has a function in our life, whether it's our car or our computer or our favorite shirt. Um, but our relationship with our belongings is extremely personal. I'm a writer. I come from a writing background. I also come from a marketing and public relations background and a branding background. So I'm very aware through my own life experience of the art, what, what's the art of acquiring stuff? And we're a very much a consumer culture. That's America, right? We have free choice. We go to stores. There's lots of options. We buy a lot of stuff. And marketing experts, you know, they know how to make us do that, right? You go into a good store. It's well organized and you take stuff home. And then you get to a point where maybe you've taken too much stuff home. Anybody ever do that, right? Yeah, yes. okay, me, me, me too. You buy something you like, you don't really need, or you buy too much of something, and it's maybe stored in four or five different places in your house, and you can't find it, so you go buy some more, you know? And we all have a way that we organize our lives. And I'm just gonna say this, it's all okay. There's nothing wrong with it. It's your life, it's your house, it's your life story. And the stuff you bring into your life story is, is, is up to you. So when I do my work and I'm helping people figure out maybe how to clean up or edit their life story a little bit. It's, it's all okay. But sometimes we have a critical need or a critical event in our life, like we're moving or we're thinking of downsizing, right? Or we have a uh, living with someone who's very cluttered and we're not. So, you know, maybe you guys have some of those questions because, um, you know, I, I thought I'd open this the way I do normally a little workshop, which is, you know, if we're going to consume stuff and we're going to live with stuff, you know, what's on the top of your mind about what you want more of, right? What, what do you want more of? Anybody have a thought there? More of. Just first thing that comes to your mind. More. Huh? Chocolate. Chocolate. Okay. <laughs> more chocolate. Okay. All right. Anyone else? So, what's something they want more of? <laughs> Doesn't have to be a thing. That's a hint. Uh, it doesn't have to be a you know something. My life is huh? peaceful, which is not. You want more peace? Very good. Anyone else want more of something that maybe you don't get in a store? How about, about love? Very good. Excellent. A. I'm sending you a prize. Um. What else? Hugs. More hugs. Yeah. yeah. Oh, virtual yeah. hug. Yeah. yeah. We're really, really not 
able to get a lot of emotional support and contact right now. Mm -hmm. And that's very painful for a lot of us. I spend a lot of time alone, but this is like overdoing it, you know, <laughs> and we all are feeling that. So it's a very real thing and it's okay. Um, what do we want less of in our lives? Clutter. Cl less clutter. All right, we'll get to the why of that in a minute. What else? Someone else have something they want less of? <laughs> Angry people. Very good. Yes, because I'm going to say, because I'm out on the street every day, I'm also doing estate sales. I have events where we're doing stay six. We're back to groups of 10 now. I, even I, who's like, I never get angry. I'm walking around mad, you know, because my life is frustrating. It's not the way it used to be. And it's, it's, it, I'm like, what do I do with this anger? You know, where do I put it? Right. So I've been going swimming, <laughs> jump in the ocean and go swimming. Or I try and just say it's temporary. Yeah. There's a little anger going around. And I, I'm guilty, man, because we're humans and we're under, we're all under a lot of kind of invisible stress right now, aren't we? Yeah, I think we can all agree on that. What else do we want less of? I'll be put perfectly frank with you about the angry people. I was not referring to the protesters. <laughs> oh, no. Thank yeah. you, Sheila. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome, yeah, yeah. Karen. No, no, no. I, you know, yeah. No, I just want to make everybody. I, I, I want, right now, top of my list, I want less stress, right? And what else I want more of mm -hmm. right now? More time. I'm very, very time, busy. Yeah. I'm too busy. I don't feel like I have enough personal time. So I want more time, right? Do I want more money? Anybody want more money or less money? No. Is that on your list? No. No, you're okay with that? Okay, great, good. Because everything that we really have in our life is a physical thing, but it's an emotional thing. So what's the chocolate about? Who oh, said makes chocolate? Us feel better. Carol. Uh, oh. <laughs> It, well, I like it, it but it, it, it just makes me feel good. You good. Know, really good. Very important. Chocolate you got it. So mm -hmm. we all want to feel good. Don't we all want to feel good? And it mm -hmm. relates to everything on these lists, right? We want to feel better. And if we have um, too much clutter in our house, you know, why does that begin to be uncomfortable, Janet, if it is? Oh, because... Um, it, it 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 causes stress because you uh you 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 want to clear, no. you want to clear and this got and you go to the counter and it's not clear it's got stuff on it that's right right and my little my little theme lately because my house gets very cluttered because i have running a business even though i live alone and a lot of paperwork and I'm just going to make this little statement because it was like my mantra for this class, right? If we had a theme that I wanted to share with you that I have learned lately because I've been spending a lot of time the last couple of days cleaning up my own house because I'm a professionally cleaning up other people's houses all the time is a little quote. When I am calm and clear, things appear, right? So when we're centered and quiet, we remember where we put something and when our space feels calm and clear there's room for life to happen when we feel start to feel really crowded by our stuff or our clothes are so crowded in our closet that we can't find our favorite shirt or our keys you know we're in a hurry blah 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 that's really frustrating so there's a balance in life between space stuff time and happiness i think anyone can anyone relate to that yeah 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 and and so when i'm working with people and maybe they're getting ready they, they want their house to feel less cluttered why because they want to feel better about their space right right and then yeah okay what do i do with my clutter right what do i what do i do with it where does it go when i don't want it anymore goodwill the thrift store that's right right and we had a little crisis go in the last month because none of those places were open that's right <laughs> yeah it was really hard because i was doing a lot of clearing for people i was nowhere and people were clearing because they were stuck at home nowhere to put their <laughs> stuff and it became kind of painful right i don't yeah. want it anymore and now like i can't even go to the dump so you know this is my business i think about these solutions all the time so i'm happy to 
answer. I also have some great books you can read too. I have a whole bunch of show and tells. But mastering the art of Please letting go has a lot to do with just being more conscious about your quality of life. And, you know, we want to have a better quality of life, right? So, it, it Lisa, can I just share one thing about um, can can I I share share one thing the, uh, the goodwill? Yes, people yes, yes you know, of course. I had friends who went over there, a friend who went over there, and the line was so long. Yes. She came up and went back home again with yeah. all the stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we have what's going on and why my business is booming right now, people, is we have a stuff crisis in our country. We've been over-consuming for like 30, 40, 50 years. And it's because that's what we're good at. We, we shop, we buy, we have all this stuff. When we want to get rid of our stuff, it can create a different set of anxiety. We may have made the decision to get rid of it. Yay, bravo. But yeah, so what's going on with Goodwill on Bainbridge is they open up at 845. You better be in line by 8 o'clock. You won't get your stuff. It's full by 930. But there and are so other places on tip. Get there early. <laughs> huh? But there are other places on Bainbridge. Yes. And yes, you it. yourself, no. absolutely. Like the thrift shop, you can make an appointment at the senior yeah. center, but you need to know what kind of things they want and they but, don't want. And so I actually have a very comprehensive list, which I'm, which I hand out at the end of my workshop, which I'll share with the senior center if you guys want it on email. And it's all the charities in like a 50 mile radius and what they take and what they don't take and what's their phone number and what's their website. But of course, that landscape right now has changed a lot from January when I last did the workshop. But it's still worth it if you have the patience and time to call up, you know, Fishline or ShareNet or your favorite, you know, children, whatever. What do they need? Do, is it something you have and how are you going to get it to them and when, right? Yeah. So it gets a little complicated, but it can be done. And... Uh, and so, you know, that I, I try and stay up to date on what's going on with those um, because of our current conditions now. But, you know, it's hard to get pickups now. Of course, we didn't have the rotary auction this year, but they're doing an online thing coming up. So we will see. Any other questions or comments or problems with your stuff? No? No? Okay. So some books that might be good. Yeah, yes. I do. The only thing, the only thing, for my daughter coming by. Uh, oh, this was a few years ago, um, and she, she, we went through my closet, right? Yeah. yeah. And she said, "Okay, mom, have you worn this in the last year?" Mm -hmm. And you know, I had a lot of it went away. Goodbye, it went away. Um, there we're talking about uh, clothing, but still, that was the way it was. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, I haven't missed a thing. Yeah, I, I didn't thought to myself, oh, I wish I'd kept that, you know. Oh, where is that? Oh, I, you know, I have not had a problem with that though. I just want to share that. Good, good, because clothes are t can be tough for us. Um, you know, we have the space. We if we have space, we fill it. That's just human nature. We have our cave. We can have lots of rocks. If we have a big closet, we can have lots of clothes. You know, and space naturally fills up. It's a habit, but when you actually clear space that you didn't, that you, you know, and you let things go that you don't need, your energy becomes, your energy becomes better in your house. Open, here's another good quote for you. Open space invites opportunity. Open space invites opportunity. So when your surfaces are clear or you finally organize your underwear drawer or your garage or whatever, and you let go um, gracefully or quickly of the things that you don't need anymore and maybe you can help find other people who need them which is good i do a lot of that then all of a sudden things feel better um a lot of us have a problem area in our house that always annoys us anybody got one of those a problem area every time you go there you're like i don't want to open this drawer or i don't want to yeah 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 we all do <laughs> we all do right mm -hmm. right and that's okay because there's always there's always one and um, some people have a whole house that's that's a problem. And, you know, we go room to room and we we straighten it out because we want to feel safe, happy and balanced in our home because it's our sanctuary. Really? Yeah. Yep. Anybody read um, 
this famous, this, anyone ever read this famous little book? Uh, I'm going to hold it up. Marie Kondo, The Life Changing Art of Tidying Up. Mm -hmm. She's got a TV show, right? She's got some great mm -hmm. tips in here on the why and how to make your face, make your space feel better. And she became famous and rich because of this book. <laughs> so, I mean, it's a real, it's a real human need. It's an emotional need and it relates to your, how your space is. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she's good. And then a couple months ago, this was the cover on Oprah magazine. Look at this. Ooh, Oprah puts it on the cover and features a whole issue about it. And it says, how to de-stress, declutter, recharge, find your center, and finally relax. That's on the cover of a magazine. Because when we get rid of the things that we don't want, including anger and stress and clutter, we actually feel better. We've kind of unclogged the arteries of our environment, and we're healthier. It's been proven. Any other thoughts or comments? No? no, that's yeah, no, but that is true. That does happen if you if you um, because I like Sheila clean. I try once a year on Mother's Day to go that's, and clean up my closet. That's it, a good. What I haven't worn in the last year. I try to get rid of. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting that you choose Mother's Day. Well, <laughs> it used to be when I, when I had my 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 children were at home. They used to bring me breakfast in, in bed. And I was allowed a couple of hours piece. Aha. Uh -huh. well, so that's nice memory. Um, I always go that day. I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I now have to go back right. and right again. And here's another great. Here's another because fantastic book. You can see my little notes all over it. And this is a really fun to read book, and it's not expensive. By um, a woman from Sweden, the gentle art art of Swedish death cleaning. This is a really lovely, beautiful, and intimate book uh, that she wrote about her own experience of clearing her mother-in-law's house, then her house after her husband died, and then really thinking about the proper way to say goodbye to everything eventually, and why leave this mess for your grandchildren or your whatever? Why not just slowly take care of it now? It's a very, very good book. And... Um, you know, uh, so I recommend that if people are thinking about, you know, legacy, what what happens? I, I live alone, you know, you know, is, is my is my life in order? Would I be embarrassed? <laughs> you know, if my brother went through my underwear drawer, he will have to do it eventually. <laughs> but, you know, so there's that one. And um, then there's a nice little book with lots of tips. It's cheap to get this online. 101 Tips and Tricks to Organize Your Clutter. It's a great little book with, I love it. It's got pictures, you know, very specific and inexpensive things you probably already have in your house or that you can acquire that help organize certain activities or certain spaces. So, um, yeah, that's, you know, it, it's good. And then some people get stuck sometimes seniors, and you may know one, they have so much clutter in their space that it's hazardous, right? It's hazardous. Yep. You're, you're, yeah. you're not putting your groceries away. Um, you, you know, you, you lose your checkbook. You got a pile of stuff that just gets bigger and it's unsafe. It creates trip and fall hazards, health hazards. You know, these are real problems, but they can be solved. And I help with that kind of thing too, because we want people to feel be safe in their environment yeah so any other thoughts about it have we really how do you, an hour? How do you get started on that conversation if you're talking with somebody who i don't know if you use the word hoarding but if uh, you have somebody who, I'll explain who that. has more things than uh than they should more things than might be average right and yeah let's talk about hoarding for a minute um it's become a uh, overpopularized word because of that TV show, right? And people who really have a compulsive over collecting or over shopping habit, I mean, compulsive to the point and lack of cleaning, you know, that's like one tenth of one cent. It's a teeny weeny weeny part of our population. 
But people have, because of that TV show, people have a fear, <laughs> you know, is my cousin a hoarder? Am I a hoarder? And um, I do go into people's homes where maybe their departed spouse at later at life had that problem. And it's kind of fear-based. But most of us are just over collectors is the word I like to use, right? Maybe you always buy too much toilet paper. Or you always buy too many shoes. You have things you like and you buy a lot of them. And that's okay. But when you no longer need all those things, those collections, you know, what, what do you do with them if they're inanimate objects? And um, so most people are, are co over collectors is the word that I like to use. Um, anyone have any thoughts on that? You know, most people aren't hoarders, but you know, we know how to, we know how to do it because it's a very, you actually need like a therapist to help you with it sometimes. And that's okay. That's okay. So. Yeah. I don't really um, have a lot of stuff except for um, several sets of dishes. Yeah. I, oh, yeah, several yeah, sets. Were from people, you know, grandmothers and those kinds of things. And mm -hmm. I talked to our right. children about it and they do not want it. They sit mm -hmm. in a cabinet, they're collecting dust. <laughs> Yeah, you bring up a, a very, very important um, point. Mm -hmm. What if we have stuff that we hope or expect other people to adopt mm -hmm. at some point while we're living or after we're dead, and um, you know, and they and they don't want it, and then what do we? What can we do with it in the meantime? So it's just a decision. Is it okay? Should it just stay in the cupboard and they deal with it later, or would you like to collect those things and give them to the thrift shop? And will they right. accept them? Because, you know, certain things that are evergreen that always sell over and over, like books and puzzles and all that stuff, things the thrift shop needs. I made a great thrift shop find the other day. I love shopping there because I'm dropping stuff off all the time. Look at these very cool sneakers I got, right? Oh, <laughs> I, oh I love them. I love them. them. Sneakers? <laughs> no, but did they make me happy when I saw them? Could I afford $8? Yes. Yes. And they're your size, Lisa? Yeah, but there's a problem. Oh, no. There's a problem with them that I have to solve. And I realize this is probably why the person brought them in. The shoelaces are too long and you trip on them. Oh. So I got to I gotta go now buy shoelaces because right. I'll cut these. Because they're I tripped and I'm like, oh, I can see why. Yeah, so why they come with super long shoelaces, who knows? But, you know, I wanted to feel good that day, support my thrift shop and have fun and buy some fun summer sneakers. And it was my size and it was eight bucks. And it was a fun little thing to do. Shopping is fun. Yeah. Shopping is fun. It's like a little discovery adventure. So don't, you know, we're lucky. We can we can still do it. Yay. It makes us happy to get the things we need, even our chocolate bars and our fresh fruit at, at, at Town and Country or Safeway. You know, collecting and accumulating things should, is joyful, you know. But sometimes the people get stuck on the what do I do with it on the other end, you know. Yeah, if you're not actually consuming it like food, um, yeah. yeah, how do I solve uh, the problem? So, um, you know, thank you for sharing that. A lot of people have that sure. problem. They have yeah. things they, they hope their children will want, or goodness gracious, a storage unit, <laughs> which is like, just take your money and burn it. Yeah. And I'm dealing with a storage unit issue right now. For someone, I really dislike doing storage units. Because when stuff is out of sight for so long, the stuff gets really sad. Right, you know, right. our stuff wants us to love it. Our stuff right. wants us to keep it clean. I really do think that way about stuff. And if you have <laughs> stuff that, you know, yeah, it, that's why I think that cleaning is love. Cleaning is a form of love. Of lo I, I spent after yesterday afternoon cleaning my house because a friend was coming to dinner and I'm like, I love my house. This is love taking care of my place. And so um, sometimes just as I'm using this, these concepts, it's a way of reframing. And maybe you don't love cleaning. Maybe you hate cleaning and your house is messy. So pay someone else to do it. <laughs> do what you love. Go to the garden or sit in a corner and read a book. Life is short. We need to focus on what we like to do. And if we're stuck, um, I have a lot of trouble with like balancing a checkbook and stuff. And I don't really enjoy it, but I make myself do it. And then I give myself a reward. So let's talk about rewards, because sometimes you have to do something you don't want to do related to stuff like 
you know, clean your garage or your house or underneath your sink or, you know, go do your closet for as much as you can stand. Let's do an hour, you know, and then what will be my reward? Or when I finally get through the goodwill line and get this stuff out of my garage. So what, what you know, a good reward, a good reward for me is like a pedicure, right? <laughs> yeah. Or, gee, I will, um, you know, take a nap. Because <laughs> what I did was a challenge. And, you know, what would make me feel good? What's my prize? And they can be little things. I'll call a friend, you know. I'll, I'll have a good gab with somebody. So, you know, it's uh, just things to think about when you're trying to tackle something that, you know, is a challenge. Don't forget to reward yourself. Um when you accomplish it, piece, even pieces of it. You can't do it all at once. So anyone ever clean out anyone else's house for them? You know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a big job. Yep. Because you're editing their life for them and they might be absent. And um, I do a lot of that for people. It's a lot of emotional heavy lifting that I do because we need to respect that this was someone's life. All of it and honor the fact that it made their life up to that point. But then we have to, you know, we're entrusted, my, me and my team, we're entrusted with taking it apart, gracefully, appreciatively, finding the stuff, new homes, um, throwing away what really can't be used, keeping as much out of the landfill as possible, and then being respectful about the whole thing. Because I see space editing as life editing, right? It's life editing. And, you know, it's an honor to do that for people. So, you know, it's a very, very in intimate thing, um, your space and your stuff. <laughs> uh, any other thoughts or comments? No? no which is, yeah. Yeah. So if anyone in the universe of the Bainbridge Island Senior Center, I'm speaking to our invisible recorded audience here, um, needs some help, I'm always helpful with a phone call. How do I do this, you know, can someone come get my trash? W whatever it might be. Um, I got a neighbor, I'm concerned, her house is really messy. Um, all right, let's see what we can do to find out what's comfortable for them. Um, I, uh, whatever the puzzle is, you know, I'm really good at solving it. I got things I don't want, how do I sell them safely, right? Yeah, or give them away. A lot of the resources we have now in our local chat groups and Facebook and stuff can help us with that. I also have good books to read about the subject. And, um, you know, we're a very, very busy company right now. Downsize for Inner Peace just signed four houses in four days because it's so connected to the real estate market, right? People want to get their houses on yeah. the summer market and they're full of stuff. And so I'm very busy. <laughs> which I'm grateful. And we're going to be doing by appointment, not public estate sales anymore, not just stay six like we've been doing, but it's all going to be by appointment in groups of 10 or less. So if you see our events out there, um, much less signage, um, it's a lot of it happens through social media. We have a Facebook page called Downsize for Inner Peace. And that's where we let people know what's coming up. Um, we put our notices out around physical ones and electronic ones on the chat groups and stuff to invite people to come. And then we do a whole house. It's kind of fun for me. I get to photograph everything. And then we build a custom website for them through estatesales.net. And that is national, but it's also regional. And it's fun for me because I get to photograph someone's whole life and their whole house and make it look good. And then there's 150 pictures that people can look at before they decide they want to contact me or decide they want to come, you know, see the sofa or whatever. Because sometimes we're shopping for a certain thing and, you know, I need a coffee table or I need uh, some firewood. I'm selling a lot of firewood right now. <laughs> so I help people sell anything you can think of. And it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I, I love what I do because it, it, I'm always learning about stuff from complicated technology products to uh, cars and vehicles and boats. Um, uh, I've sold a John Deere tractor, you know, who would think, right? And um, it's so interesting because 
those things reflected that person's life. And there's someone who needs it. And we match, we're matchmaking, you know? And then the person who needs it is like, I'm so excited to get exactly the coffee table I was looking for. And I got it secondhand at a good price and I had fun doing it, you know? And so um, that's kind of, we try to make downsizing fun emotionally for a person and emotionally for the, the person who comes to us to find the thing. It's a very interesting business because it's all about making people happy, really. You know, it is. We're trying. We're trying. We try really hard at that. So, all righty. So if it's helpful, uh, as soon as I'm done contacting all the charities and finding out and updating my list and finding out who's taken what and what's the best way to reach out to them, right, to find out if you can bring your stuff or drop it off, I'll have that updated and I'll, like, leave a copy in the thrift shop or something. Is that helpful? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Okay, because we all need to know that. And maybe you just need a phone number of ARC. ARC is picking up again, by the way. Association for... Oh, they yeah, they're picking up. But they need a lot of notice, and they only take certain things. Um, and um, there are delivery companies that will deliver your stuff for you, too, that are popping up. And that's a really handy service. So um, you don't have to leave your house if you can't. They'll just take it away from your door and charge you a small fee. And away your stuff goes and they sit in the goodwill line instead of you. <laughs> so that's how it works. Did I leave any uh, stone unturned here yet? <laughs> no? Okay. Great. Um, there was no, some, what, 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 Janet? When, when, when I moved, I moved about, about 10, ten, ten years ago, ago, we had a lot of furniture, yes. beds and sheets and things. Yes. And, uh, uh, I, there was a place in um, Bremerton that picked up things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, are people still wanting furniture? Can yeah, furniture people want still a lot of money? furniture. They do. And and what's interesting about our business is the last uh, several estate sales we did, which were all fairly big houses and stay six and wait your turn and all that. Three to 400 people came to each one of them in two days. That's a little market indicator that people want to shop. It was I was like, amazing, thank you. But we had to, of yeah. course, follow the health rules and all that stuff, which we did. We were very strict about it. Yeah. And, and we sold everything. We sold everything. So peop, there's, there's a market just about for everything. And also, people are wanting to buy local instead of going to Silverdale or to a big store. Who wants to go to Macy's, right? Yeah. And maybe you don't want to buy online and pay all that delivery. Or the thing you're looking for is something small and fun, like a new set of silverware or books to read. Great. You can find it out there and you're in a way helping recycle it. And it's, it's fun. It's good. So yeah, people, people want everything. And we, we organize a house of everything and we clean it and sanitize it and we make it ready. And sometimes the set of sheets might end up not being purchased, but then we take it to the animal shelter or whoever needs it. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, so there's always a way, a second option for everything. And if it's really just trash and it's done, we dispose of it. But we try not because it costs money to take stuff to the dump. So we uh, we find happy adoptions for 99 percent of everything, you know, that we handle. And um, yeah. Anyway, anybody got anything on their wish list that they're looking for? Mm, Besides chocolate. No. <laughs> and you know where to get that. Oh yeah, bonbon. <laughs> yeah, bonbon. Oh, the best. Yeah, I keep emergency Theo's chocolate in my house. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So we sometimes tell people find stuff. Lisa, I need firewood. Oh, I got firewood coming up next week. I, I, I'm looking for a coffee table. Um, I want to buy a piano. I sell pianos. They're grand pianos. I'm one of the few people who can sell them. So you know, it's fun. We we take something and give it a new a new life. And uh, yeah. so when it comes back to you in your own environment, I would say stay healthy, stay happy. And, you know, if you have time to declutter or show your house some love with a little extra cleaning or you need some help with that, you know, reach out to the resources around you. Um, people will come help you with these things and you don't have to carry anything heavy. I'm getting old. I just turned 60, you know. I don't carry heavy furniture anymore and I'm very careful even about big bags of stuff. And so we have to ask for help um, sometimes with 
you know, even just getting things to our car. And that's okay because there is help everywhere. We good, people? Mm -hmm. Okay. Was it yeah. interesting? Was it helpful? Yes, Lisa. Thank you. Okay, good. It was. Good. Well, hopefully we'll be back to doing more of these things in person because when we do them in person and someone takes the trouble to you know, drive to the senior center and come to a workshop and many of them have never been there before, you know, we really do share what, what brought you here today, you know, and some people are really at a crossroads and we, we all realize we're not alone in this. It's just all human living. It's all just the mess of human living and it's all okay. Um, but it's all about not, not feeling overwhelmed and trying not to feel stressed, especially now, and trying not to feel stuck. You know, there's a way to unstick you. And a lot of it's in your head. You know, how you think about things. We had a lot of stuff in there. And a little a little head clearing can be a good thing too. You know, a, a walk in nature, a cup of tea with a friend. That's a good stuff reliever. A, just a little peace and quiet is a really good mental stuff reliever. And so I just end this kind of by saying, the stuff in our life is physical, right? But most of the stuff is in our head and our perceptions about our stuff and our culture. And so, you know, that's why meditation or peaceful time really is really, really good because it, it, it'll keep us in balance in these crazy months ahead. So work on your inner peace and work on, you know, balance in your home. And, you know, I think we'll, we'll all get through this.